So uh, welcome to the next uh, work package e closeout meeting, which is about the project ADAR, assessment of degree of higher automation levels on human roles. Uh, learned that after two and a half. <laughs> and the consortium included ISTIFI, uh, represented by uh, Rosanna Calzar today, uh, who is the project leader. Also NLR and DLR and CREDA. And the presentation will be given by Rosanna. Thank you. First of all, thank you all of you to come to this presentation. And thank you to Gianluca and Eva for arranging the, all the, this meeting. And thank you, Dirk, for your support during all the project. As Dirk has said, uh, I am here to present the results of uh, our package e project, which is called ADAR. And uh, it uh, deals with a gaming assessment, assessment of the strong automation on future ATM systems. As uh, Dirk told you, this is the companies participating in the, in the project and the people <laughs> also. And uh, in the presentation, we will see the following topics. First of all, I will tell you the objective of the assessment. After this, uh, the methodology or the approach that we follow to get to reach our objectives. Uh, I will explain to you also more or less the content and the scenarios that we used uh, for the assessment. And after this, we will be ready to go in to the results of the project. And uh, I will finish with a set of recommendations and uh, the next steps and conclusions. Then, uh, about the objective, as uh, the name of the project is assess the impact of high, higher level of automation on human roles. This is a very general topic, and we, we, uh, we focused our assessment in two different environments. The aerospace organization and management environment, and also in the airport operations center. And about the higher level of automation, the, this uh, higher level of automation, we focused on three different level of automation which are linked to different time frames, okay? The 2020 time frame, which is going to be our lower level of automation. The 2020 will be our baseline, our starting point for our assessment. After this, we will assess an intermediate level of automation, which corresponds to the 2035 time frame. And finally, the highest level of automation, which is going to be the 2050 time frame. To do this, we define some specific objectives to, to reach our general objective. And we consider that, that to assess the impact of automation, we should assess this impact on the interaction of these roles. Also, assess the impact of automation on the supporting tools used by these roles. And finally, assess the impact of automation on the responsibilities of these roles. And how? We used uh, serious games which is called also a game technique. And uh, the methodology that we use, we follow different, uh, uh, several steps. The first were the definition, the first definition of the roles, the responsibilities, and also the scenarios to be assessed. And to do this, we uh, started uh, doing literature review, and we uh, defined first uh, our baseline our uh, roles and responsibilities for 2020 uh, time frame. And uh, we used mainly some CSR documents, and the main document that we used as reference is one document produced by the B42.2 project, uh, which is called uh, Actors, Roles and Responsibilities. Once we had our definition of our roles for 2020, we also uh, define our expectations about how it was going to be the ATM environment for 2035 and 2050. And we used mainly uh, documents that you can see here from ACARE. We used also out-of-the-box report and also a DLR uh, 2006 total airport management uh, document, which is uh, more related to the concept, to this concept. And once we, we had this information, we could describe the roles, our expectations about these roles, for 2035 and for 2050. 
All this information was compiled in our first deliverable, D11, which is called Roles and Responsibilities. Finally, as we had a description of the most of ATM roles, we had to select to focus our assessment on a set of roles. Then we selected the roles for each environment, depending on the, on the environment that we were going to, to assess. And finally, we described these scenarios per each environment and also per each time frame. And all this information was compiled in the D12 document, a scenario description. After this, uh, uh, we were ready to design uh, and execute uh, the gaming exercises. To do this, for each environment, we did two gaming sessions, two different gaming sessions, and with two different techniques. We did first for each environment one paper-based gaming session, and we performed, after the paper-based gaming session, one platform-based gaming session. And during the project, along the project, we decided to enrich our results to carry it out to undertake an extra platform gaming session but in this case, the actors were going to be students. In the other case, were experts, ATM experts. We will see more about this after. And uh, the final step is the analysis of the results. We define results per environment and also overall results. The type of results that we obtained are from the experts' gaming sessions, mainly we obtained a qualitative assessment and only for the environment two, for the students' gaming sessions, we could do a quantitative assessment. And about uh, the gaming, if you don't know anything about gaming, the, the gaming technique uh, is, is more like games, like role games, but uh, they are performed or played more than more for pure entertainment. Yeah, it's not only to play; it's only to explore concepts, to validate concepts. Uh, it is uh, considered a low-cost uh, technique and, uh, of course, it's very appropriate to simulate and to explore decision-making making processes and, inter and interactions between humans and uh, interactions between humans and machines. And finally, this technique helps to experts to uh, put in, into the context, to live a more real situation about the two different uh, techniques, uh, gaming techniques. We used first the paper-based uh, gaming technique, technique because it is appropriate, it is suitable to perform a first assessment, a preliminary assessment, uh, and also these uh, this, uh, results will support to the configuration of the platform for the next subsequent uh, gaming session. This technique allows uh, quite flexibility to explore different solutions. When you don't have a very mature concept or a very mature idea, you can explore more with the paper-based gaming sessions. And after the paper-based gaming sessions, we executed at the platform base, which allows to obtain the complete assessment that we were looking for. And the main characteristic is that one platform, one hardware platform, it's used, which gives more realism to the, to the simulation, to the exercise. Uh, of course, there is a close link with the automation in, the, in this case, and uh, we, we can complete our assessment. We could complete our assessment. Now we are going to, to, I am going to explain you a little bit about the scenarios for helping you to understand the results. And the first is uh, the Earth-based organization and management. The scenario, uh, both the scenarios uh, deals with the demand and capacity balance processes, okay? In this case, we started from a balanced situation in the day of operations, but still in the planning phase, some hours before of the execution. And uh, at, the, at the beginning of the, of the morning, some hours before, we received a uh, uh, bad weather forecast, which impacts our, uh, our demand. And some, uh, one imbalance is detected, we have to look for a solution, and finally we have to assess if this local solution has impacted our network. The roles will be the local traffic manager, which is in charge of the local area, 
of the traffic of the demand uh, to manage the demand in the local area the network manage, manager which is in charge uh, of the all the full network uh, manager which is more or less like Europe and uh, the airport CDM uh, collaborative decision maker manager and the aerospace manager and these roles were played by the same actor and about the environment too it's very 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 similar in this case we started with uh, different unexpected events. We are in the day of operations. There is uh, a special event as a final football match and there are a lot of uh, flights scheduled for this airport and suddenly something unexpected happens and this impacts uh, our demand. The imbalance is detected and we have to find one solution. The actors in this case were the airport agent in charge of the airport decisions and two different airlines. One which is the major airline agent, which is an agent which commonly works in the airport in the daily operations, and one charter airline agent who works especially for this day in this airport. About the level of automation that we stated for the different scenarios is that for 2020 we define it that the systems will provide solutions for the individual. This means that the solutions will be the best per each actor, depending on the, their necessities or their objectives. For 2035, the system will provide to the actors different solutions, but different global solutions to solve the global situation. And for 2050, the system will provide the optimal solution. The decision of the actors will be accept or reject this solution. We selected some metrics to measure the impact of automation on these roles, and these metrics are, for example, acceptance, confidence and self-efficacy, workload, situational awareness, trust or teamwork. And we assessed these metrics using some questionnaires based on standardized questionnaires like, for example, NASA Task Load Index or CARS, which is a questionnaire specific for acceptance or SHAPE, which is more for teamwork, for example. Only some examples, yeah? We used more, but these are only examples. About the two different gaming sessions between experts and students, we can see this comparative. For the experts gaming sessions, we obtain qualitative results, we use questionnaires, but also we use the notes and the comments taken from the debriefing or during the gaming session, during the performance of the gaming sessions. And the players were only three players per environment. They were all ATM expertise with 10 and 25 years of experience. They were from different nationalities and most of them had no experience in gaming technique. And about the students, you can see that the main results were quantitative. We used also questionnaires to collect this information. And about the players, there were in total 60 students divided in 20 groups of three students. They were not ATM experts. These are the differences. Before going into the results, I would like to show you some considerations for the understanding, for the well understanding of the, of the results. First, the results are performed taking into account our first definition of the roles and responsibilities in the first stage of the, of the project. Then we uh, compared all the results to our first definitions and expectations. Secondly, the expert assessment, assessment is only based in one group of experts. It's only based on uh, the opinion of one expert per, per role, yeah? then the results could be biased by the personality or maybe by the experience of, of the expert. And finally, no system failures were assessed because of the time and effort limitations. And now about the results. I, I, will, I will go into the results per environment and also I will give you some topics, some results, some main overall results. I, I would like to remind you that for environment one, we did only 
the experts' uh, gaming sessions, and the results were uh, all qualitative. Okay, looking the results and uh, by by specific objective, we have seen that the, that the mechanisms to enhance the trust the trust in the automation for environment one were that we found that the level of trust is maintained along the different time frames, the different level of automations. And we found the experts pointed out that they had positive feelings about the trust in the systems, the reliability and the accuracy of the systems. We found also that trust was more related to the appropriateness of the solutions than to the level of automation. This means that the actors trusted more in the systems if the solutions were in line with his thinking, with his expectations. But we cannot find a link between the different level of automation. Also, we found that the replacement of the humans by the automation, this did not influence too much in the trust of the systems. They stated that for the traffic that they will have to manage in the future, automation was very important. They wanted the automation to manage the traffic. And as they were in the planning phase, their acceptance and their trust in the system was better. Secondly, about the interaction between, between human roles, they perceived a decrease in interactions as expected but they found that along the different time frames, along the different level of automations, the systems provided enough information to them, but the feeling of support between the teamwork, between the team members, was less, was lower. Also, I have to say that the main mean of communication used during the simulations was the chat, the messenger, and finally they stated that this tool could be accepted as mean of communication since they were in the planning phase and immediateness in the communication was not crucial for them. And also, it uh, happened one specific issue, which uh, was that sometimes roles worked in parallel in the same solution. They requested that in this case, it uh, could be good to know who roles were working in the same solution and also to know the priorities to implement the solution. About uh, the impact of automation on the responsibilities, on the human behavior also, we found the experts said that they perceived the workload as acceptable. But in highest level of automation for, the specific, uh, for this specific time frame, for 2050, I remind you that the possibilities were more accept or reject one solution is that only one actor could be working, could deal with these responsibilities, and they decided that regional network manager was the more appropriate role to do this. And also, they felt that in this case, if they have to work with this system, they were not responsible at all, and the system was responsible, and it should be audited by the corresponding authority. Also, they found, they discussed about some human characteristics that they considered that they were very well implemented by the humans, but not so much by the machines. One of these characteristics was the flexibility. The flexibility to decide to look for another solution, to look for one solution, or maybe to rearrange another solution. They proposed that to implement this flexibility in the automation, there were two possibilities. The first is no flexibility at all. <laughs> you put some rules, you state the limits of the capacity of your network, and you follow the rules. In case that you have some buffer, one operator, one human operator, should be able to review and maybe modify the solutions. And finally, about the supporting tools, they requested or they stated that the new communication tools could be used in this planning phase for solving the demand and capacity imbalances. Also, they requested a tool in which uh, they could see all the multiple scenarios that they were assessing to compare the different solutions. About the cost index parameters, the cost index was a, an indicator to support the roles to compare and to decide between the different solutions. This indicator was composed by different, uh, by other indicators. 
they stated that another non-economic cost should be taken into account. After the execution of the, this first set of gaming sessions for Environment One, we took some lessons learned to be applied for the subsequent gaming sessions. The first is that we recommended, or we saw that it worked very well, the combination of the two gaming techniques, paper and platform gaming techniques. And also that it was crucial that the same participants played in two different gaming sessions, in the paper and in the platform. We recommend it to plan very, very well the duration of the training, because during the environment one, we have seen that the training plan it was not enough. We needed more time. It took more time than planned. And finally, that we should consider the order effects of the performance of the different rooms for the subsequent uh, gaming sessions. I mean with this that uh, we used the same order in the environment one gaming sessions and to avoid these possible order effects, we should uh, perform more runs and randomize, it a little, uh, and randomize it the, the order. And also, uh, one no recommendation is uh, the change the roles of the actors between the different rooms maintain the same actor in the same role. Unless when you have less or few actors, few people to play. About the management too, I would like to remind you that uh, we did a, a paper-based gaming uh, session, another platform-based gaming session, and one extra with students. Then we, we will see quantitative and also qualitative data. Then the mechanisms found to enhance the trust is that it was very, very highly recommended, it was mandatory, that include more reasoning to understand the solutions that the system provided. Also, that the cost models of each actor should be consistent with the experience of the users, of the experts. We found, in this case, for this environment, that the highest level of automation had a low level of acceptance. This result was supported by the experts and also by the students' gaming sessions. One mechanism to improve very much the trust in the system is to involve the user since the very beginning of the life cycle system, development system, from the design until the transfer into operation. And about the interaction, the impact on the interaction between human roles, we have seen from the results of the students' gaming sessions that the group performance improved along the increasing level of automations, but at the cost of the individual performance. This result has to do with the way in which the system was designed. For 2020, the main goal was to attend to support the individual, and for 2035 and 2050, the main goal, the main focus was put into the group, into the, the global solutions, into finding the global solution. About the, the responsibilities, the impact on the, on the responsibilities, we have seen a reduction in the workload. This is cost, mainly we can affirm this, because of the reduction in the duration of the negotiations between the actors. In the case of user acceptance, we saw different results, different opinions between the expert's assessment and the student assessment. For example, for the experts, they found that uh, the user acceptance, they rated the acceptance very, very low because of the lack of reasoning. And in case of the students, this user acceptance, the higher level of automation, didn't lead to a lower level of acceptance. This could be explained maybe because students were not operational people and they were not so worried about to find the best solution and how to find it. In this case, for this environment, we have seen that the best time frame rated for this was the 2035 time frame, the intermediate level of automation. About the situation awareness, we saw different perceptions depending on the roles. In one hand, the airlines perceived that the situation awareness decreased along the time, along the different time frames, but in case of the airport operator, the best situation, the best level of automation 
was the 2035. One common point, one agreement was that the 2050, the highest level of automation, was the worst rated in terms of situational awareness. This is because the loss of control of their activities. Finally, we found from the students' gaming session that consciousness has an effect into individual performance, especially in higher level of automation. And about the supporting tools, uh, the main results were about uh, the development of, of solutions. Then they requested that a record of the updated parameters that they modified to find the best solutions. This record should be available to be reviewed by them and to understand better and to follow the process to find out one solution. They wanted to see the information about the winners and losers in one negotiation. Finally, the third option that the request that they asked is that this process to find one solution should be transparent, the information should be available for all, and also we should take into account that the information provided by the system was not the same if the solution was appropriate or not, if they consider that the solution solves all, all the problem or not. Finally, about the, 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 the main results, the overall results, we did a comparative between our expectations at the beginning regarding the workload, the, the situation awareness, all these indicators, and uh, we analyzed the results, and these were our, our, our findings. About the workload, we stated at the beginning that the workload was dependent on the role, but we consider that the workload would be lower for airport operator and the airspace manager, but for the airport CDM manager and the local traffic manager, this workload would be higher. Our findings were that we found a general trend to the decrease of the workload linked to, to the duration of the negotiations, and also we found that the factors which contribute to the workload changed. At the beginning, in the, our baseline, in 2020, the main factor could be the negotiation time, but for higher level of automations, this uh, contribution, this factor, could be the reasoning of the system, to understand the system. And about the situational awareness, and our expectations is that in general, it would be an increasing of the situational awareness with a higher level of automation, except for local traffic manager. And our findings were that the situational awareness was rated as sufficient. However, we cannot do a clear conclusion because there were small differences and with the, the limited number of answers, we could not find a final conclusion about this. Anyway, we can extrapolate, we can say that the results, the results about the situation awareness, the main roles who benefited from the automation were the ones who works with the network-wide decision making in charge of, uh, of the network operations. This is because finding solutions for network operations is a more complex task. This could be one reason to justify small uh, differences. And about frustration, we stated that uh, it would be an issue for the local traffic manager and the airport CDM manager, but we did not find any specific mention about frustration. Only we found something interesting for the highest level of automation in 2050. Is that opposite results, <laughs> furthermore. The more for 2050, the experts felt frustrated when they were not able to manage the situation, to influence in the situation. Maybe build other solutions or propose new changes or ideas. On the other hand, less frustration came out because when there was disagreement between the actors, not very much time was used in the negotiations. It was easy to decide <laughs> because system decided by them. About the performance, our expectations were that the, the, the performance should be maintained, even improved, 
our findings is that they consider their performance as quite high. From the students' gaming session, we have seen that there was a relationship between user acceptance and the individual performance at the different roles, positive for 2020 and negative for 2035 for the intermediate level of automation. The system design led to a better group performance at the cost of the individual one. And also we see that one personality trait as consciousness was important for an appropriate performance at the highest level of, of automation. After presenting all these results, the general recommendations that we stated are that to include, to introduce the new or the higher levels of automation, it should be studied the benefits of human aspects as flexibility or maybe human kindness. How these aspects could be introduced in the automation, in the systems. And also make sure that solutions are understandable by the users to improve the trust in the systems. This is crucial to get a high level of acceptance and a high level of trust. And also, it is very important to have a clear definition of authoring and accountability. And also take into account the time frame of the flight, if we are in the planning phase or we are in execution phase, because following our results, in planning phase, the actors were more prone to accept automation and to trust in automation. Also, take into account the personality traits uh, to define the roles and maybe to select people to work with a specific level of automation. In terms of, of communications, uh, we recommend it to use this kind of, of tools, but again, depending on the time frame in which the processes are performed. In planning phase, the acceptance of this mean of communications is high, but could be not in the execution time frame. And finally, take into account for communication in the, in the advantages and disadvantages of the communication. Beneficial to get an understanding and to get an agreement, but it could be not good in negotiation processes it could lead to endless situations, then it's important to put a limitation of time during the negotiations. And also, consider the need to develop new standards for the acceptable levels of workload, because the factors which contributed to this workload changed. It could be recommendable to review the acceptable levels of workload. And also, provide global information to all actors. This was very good uh, rated. We received uh, very good comments about providing this global view. They missed in the daily operations this kind of information. Finally, to finish uh, the next steps that we see now, we need to consolidate these findings with more experts and not only the students' uh, results but also the experts' results to validate and to consolidate these outputs. And also we see that it could be good to continue with the assessment of further effects between the personality traits that we used during the students' gaming sessions doing more simulations, making more simulations about this. And also we think that it could be good to assess the UDPP process, which could not be assessed in the project. It was planned, but finally, due to the limitations and the lack of availability of experts, we could not do it. Finally, to conclude, I would like to show you four main aspects of this assessment. We obtained a higher level of acceptance of the higher level of automations than expected. We expected that maybe the level of acceptance was lower, but this is because of the planning phase. They were not so reluctant to accept the automation during these phases. Also, take into account the authoring and accountability. The responsibilities should be very, very clear. It is crucial to understand the solution behind the system. Take into account that personality could affect, could influence 
in the performance, in the management of, of the automation. That is all. Thank you very much for listening to listening me. And if you have any question. Thank you. You mentioned that you first run uh, paper experiments, then platform experiments. Did you find that the results were consistent between both uh, kind of sessions? We found some general results, but uh, in the, with the paper-based gaming sessions, we explore more solutions. Then we selected from this solution, we selected the, the, the more acceptable to, to play, to perform, to analyze in the, in the platform gaming sessions. We found some similarities, but uh, the realism of the platform here was very suspicious yeah, for the understanding. The, 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 the value of the results obtained to the, to the, the platform was, uh, was very important in comparison with the paper. What I missed a little bit is um, you, you described the, as, as one of the, the target variables upon which you assess the impact of high level of automation as a human performance situation awareness workload is related to acceptance. But your level of automation is not a human performance matched scale also. There's a, there's a lot of literature on, on, on how uh, different degrees of automation match onto levels of, 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 uh, of automation in the sense of human performance. What do you replace? Do you replace automation when you replace the, the human by automation, is it what kind of information processing activity is it? Is it a small perceptual support in the, in the intake of, the, of, 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 of information? Is it more the integration of, of information along uh, to, 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 to derive it at an assessment of the situation which is linked directly conceptually to situation awareness? Or is it more in the decision-making process, which is more related to planning elements? So what kind of decision-making process is replaced by the automation? Or is it the execution of a, of a plan which has been decided? There's a lot of literature. The other thing I have found, some of the recommendations made that you should share the information, SMS. There's also a, quite a lot of literature on, on using metaphors, team player. Automation should behave as a team player. Well, how can we design automation that it acts as a team player? So they used metaphors like American football, like the guy who, 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 who's, who directs all the different players. Players should be aware of the targets and have their own, have their own little, little, little games. And I, I missed a little bit. Because it is, it, is, it is a human performance focused study, I missed the human performance ingredients in the degree of, of, of in the de definition of, of automation. You can't simply say this is low level because it's 2020, or this is low level, medium level 2020. This is completely technology driven or technology which is, which is not a clear scale for me. Yeah. Maybe here I, I, I did not include anything about the different scales that we use for the level of automation. Uh, we use some scales as a one about the yeah, level of automation, cool. and the other one. Uh, anyway, uh, to define the different level of automation, uh, we took into account this, this link. We, uh, and within our expectations, we, uh, we define uh, the expected uh, automation for 2035-2050 based on some literature and also based on, 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 the, on the different scales of the level of automation and how this, uh, this automation impacted, or in, uh, impacted on, on the walls and the responsibilities. We stated uh, at the beginning of the project in more detail. Maybe here is not... Uh, no, at least I can't see it from what you have reported. Maybe yeah, it's in, yeah. the, in the report. So that, that the actual task, we did not elaborate on that because of lack of time probably, how the actual task of the students and the expert were and in what way, uh, which aspects of this task were then 
automated or we we had in our report the differences between our expectations and the possibilities of the world mm -hmm. and the results. How change, how this is possible to change yeah. and, and, and maybe in a way uh, we had a limited number of opinions that uh, uh, we we did not find a lot of of uh, information about them. And, and, and of course, when we did the literature review, we were more focused to find some uh, some some outputs, some findings about the ATM, basic on, 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 on ATM systems. And sometimes for 2035, it was difficult for us to find uh, uh, to find this uh, this support to, to 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 be sure that we are defining a real, <laughs> so the real uh, environment for 2035 and 2050. Because the level of automation that we were exploring are maybe too high. Uh, because uh, in, in it nowadays, gives, yeah. It gives a little bit the impression as if uh, uh, with progress of time, you, you want to have high level uh, automation because in 2050, so that the, the choice of, of the degree or the level of automation is, is driven by the, the maturity of the technology, which is not fully supported by from a human factors perspective. Uh, so uh, I think this is a bit, uh, I don't know, but this suggestion yeah. I would not subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we uh, starting the, the started the project, we we decided that uh, we were going to face the experts to different level of automation. Even they were not very comfortable with this high level of automation. We said to the experts, okay, you have this environment, you have to work with it, and you have to find the advantages and disadvantages of these uh, levels of automation. We, we, we were not looking exactly to, uh, to to look for the best. Finally, we they 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 they, they stated that they they declared the, the opinion. Yeah, but but uh, but we we try to 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 look for for the main aspects to take into account in these different levels of, of automation. But isn't I mean there are areas where we have high almost full of mechanical uh, lines uh, where, where everything is reliable and where there is quite well predictable environment and uh, we know that the, the, that the area we're working in is, is, has not this degree of predictability and, and uh, so I would not expect full automation to be the solution and one of your results is that the flexibility of the human yeah, she has to be acknowledged and it's a bit important to this, that, uh, this support uh, is needed for them to fulfill this role. Yeah. Maybe I think that uh, we could find something applicable that maybe for planning things or maybe uh, long term, to be applicable in long term uh, phases, yeah. not uh, in processes that are related to the execution execution phases. Maybe in some specific for some specific tasks. Related to the full automation, yeah? in, in an ATM environment. Well I I know from 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 also from the experience, especially when it comes to planning that uh, planning that, that kind of what if uh, scenarios uh, support is, is needed. But that is I think conceptually well that if uh, uh, describable as a high level of information integration, in, 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 in so so there are patterns uh, of of optimal opti uh, 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 automation. That's that's one of the messages yeah. of, yeah. of the Parasuraman model that 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 it is not a unified scale, which uh, you have to have a view on, on what kind of say information process activity is replaced and. When, they, when, when there is a need for a high level of information integration support, then uh, it might not be advisable to have a high level of decision support in the sense that they feel they, they lose their authority. 
and the responsibility. But high level of information uh, integration is, 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 is usually a good thing, which is also high level of information. Yeah. That's why. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to, <laughs> to no, read no, the report. No, 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 we know. Maybe uh, uh, we, 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 we were very ambitious with the OTT, and maybe we could uh, focus maybe on some more specific uh, task or process to, to, to find uh, more, uh, more results or more details. So for that, uh, this was the first time that we uh, were assessing human performance with uh, this technique, and we 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 did uh, we 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 defined this this methodology. But uh, it was more to to see what are the main topics, the main aspects to address in very future, in very uh, maybe some in some cases unrealistic situations. Yeah. It's only to to, to see the. Uh, how the human could uh, could face to the highest levels. Did you find that uh, experience or maybe age had an impact on on uh, the yeah. results that you found? We 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 did not uh, find this kind of uh, results in the students because in any way they were not expert and we uh, do not uh, did not have enough experts to do to, 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 to this. Uh, one of the experts uh, told us, OK, now I, 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 I don't want this. I don't want this level of automation. But I am sure that in the future, the new uh, controllers and new operators will be more prone to use technology. So uh, I have to imagine, <laughs> I have to put into the context, uh, then it could be possible that I, uh, somebody could affect <laughs> this solution in the, in the future. Yeah? But uh, uh, of course, age could be <laughs> could be a, an important an important question. But not only uh, age, maybe openness. A lot of some other personality traits could be very important and very determined to accept. Actually, your project is restricted with dynamic capacity and balancing process, and you defined eight roles in your first document, it was first or second, and I checked the roles that you defined. Uh, actually, you know, dynamic capacity balancing is covering the period from uh, 90 minutes prior to the execution phase to, uh, to the 30 minutes. Uh, it's something like it is bridging the gap between execution phase and the uh, pre-departure phase, uh, ATFCM, sorry. Uh, so, uh, while I was reading your documents, I do not, I didn't, uh, I didn't understand. Why didn't you take into account the multi-sector planner, the guys in the execution phase? and uh, uh, flow management position. You just, uh, you, you just concentrated on the uh, local traffic manager and it, uh, she or she has tight connections with the executors. You know. This is one of my questions. Yeah, this is because our scenarios, also our, our platforms were, fo were focused more on processes related to the planning phase, not so uh, in, in, in the phase that uh, you, you are talking about, the dynamic, dynamic uh, process, this was the, 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 the rationale behind not selecting, uh, not assessing the multi-sector plan. Because, uh, because our time frame our was previous to, to the, to the multi-sector plan operation. We selected some roles, but after this we had to select again which uh, roles could be assessed by us with our tools. Okay, the other thing is you define these roles and uh, new responsibilities. Uh, while I, but I, I, I didn't understand in your documents that what are the new roles and what are the new responsibilities. 
for these actors. We did not create any new role. We uh, took uh, the roles that Cesar defined, some of them are new roles, and after, uh, after this we uh, extrapolate, based on some literature, their responsibilities or the evolution of these roles for the different time frames. And uh, some of the results, for example, were, uh, were that uh, the, the for 2050, maybe the, the local traffic manager and the procedure manager uh, uh, were not necessary to be in the, in the daily processes. The responsibilities uh, should uh, take over by the manager with the highest <coughs> level of automation. Then, uh, we did not define uh, any, new, any new role. And responsibility also? Because uh, I couldn't find in your documents, but you stated that you define new roles and new responsibilities. It was like that when I was... I think that in, uh, there, 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 there was a, a chapter specifically in which you uh, redefined the main differences in the responsibilities uh, within the roles. I, I, I can check it with you, with you. Maybe it's not in the D1, maybe it's in, in, in the design. Uh, in the design of the exercise documents in which uh, we uh, specified a little bit more the scenarios and uh, this, uh, this, uh, this means that maybe the roles and responsibilities uh, should be uh, more specified there. We describe a little bit more the roles in, in the design, uh, in the experimental plan documents. Okay, uh, yeah, but my other question is your project is really connected with, have some tight connections with Cesar project 471-040701, which is dynamic capacity balancing. And you, uh, did, you uh, did, did you perform many activities with Cesar projects and also uh, with the work package project? It, it has what kind of activities? With the ten, 10 projects, we, uh, we did not uh, do any, any, any activity with them. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we did some uh, common activity. We, we, we took, uh, we celebrated, maintained one, some meetings with uh, another uh, project with Mufasa, for example, which uh, we found this project was the more related uh, project and the main activities, the main uh, the main activities were with this project, with the facade project, which is a more package project. And I can't really ask what were these activities? And the activities were more related to the to how to measure how to measure the, 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 the indicators and uh, also to 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 avoid overlapping in the in the activities. And the main reason to not uh, interact too much with the with the ten uh, work package ten products is that uh, finally uh, this uh, relationship was not so strong because we addressed planning processes which were not uh, uh, very related to to, to this product. No, it is really it's really related with four seven one. It's directly related. To it. Also, they are working on some tools right now to, for the demand capacity balancing. I don't know exactly why. I think that we did our first review at the beginning of the project. We, we, we did not find uh, uh, literature maybe in our first review. And, and after this, we, with our effort, we limited our interactions with uh, this work package. But I will, I will take into account because I can see now. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the results from this project. Thank you. I have another question. Yeah. I'm not an expert on the validation techniques, but can you explain uh, a little bit about Because I just read so many times, but I couldn't understand precisely about what, uh, what did you do in paper-based gaming sessions, and what did you do in uh, platform-based gaming sessions. Yes. Just can you give us a brief explanation about this? With the paper-based gaming sessions, we did a preliminary assessment. We had some ideas, some uh, scenarios defined, 
and we uh, needed to uh, assess these scenarios if they uh, were going to if they were realistic uh, between the different solutions that we proposed uh, we 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 needed to know to focusing only some cut some some one specific type of solutions and also we uh, needed to obtain information to configure the platform about for example some responsibilities to be uh, programmed or maybe to be developed uh, in, the, in the in the in the platform then the main pro uh, the purpose of the paper based gaming sessions is to do a preliminary assessment about all the ideas that we have and uh, with the platform, we did the complete assessment because we have the platform, which is more realistic because when you play with paper, uh, sometimes it's, it's difficult to imagine the real situation. And, and, and this, uh, this was the, the, the purpose and the goal of each uh, gaming session. But, uh, you, you, you explain our purpose, but not actually what, what, what was done. They got a paper. And there were the list of flights, or what? Am I just concrete, what, what, what to take it? Yeah, uh, for example, uh, okay, for example, in the in the first in the environment one, we explore different uh, possibilities, five possibilities uh, about the 2050 uh, with the highest level of information. Maybe uh, one of them was the system uh, do all the system accept. On yeah. System on paper, what does it mean? Sorry, it's what, what does it mean when you say a system does all and you have a paper base? We have uh, the actors around the table, uh, around the table, and we said, okay, we have this situation with this uh, demand, but you cannot do anything. You can see, you can monitor your system. Your this demand. was scripted on a piece of paper, or yes. did, did somebody introduce it was, this? In this case, it was like it was done only with a projection and we we put the solution. This is the solution and this is going to be accepted directly by the system. What do you think? What is your reaction? So you perform this paper-based uh, gaming sessions only with the experts and it's like brain brainstorming. Yeah, in the case of 2050, yes. For example, for 2020 and 2025, we used some paper with different solutions, yeah, written solutions with uh, some indicators and they have to uh, uh, to, to build <laughs> these solutions, but yeah, using with uh, using paper or maybe Excel uh, sheets or maybe this kind this kind of. Uh, and, and then on the platform, in what way does it differ? The platform is uh, a real platform is, is more realistic. I can show you uh, uh, some uh, pictures about the platform. Yeah? And for example. In the chip platform, in the space organization management, uh, the layout were several computers in a room like this, and uh, the most important is the software. This is more or less what one network manager or one airline, in this case, is the network manager or the local manager can see. Here you have the different sectors and maybe the capacity within the sectors. Here you, you can see the flights and then the flight plans. And this is the kind of uh, things which, uh, or, or this is the tool that uh, they have to use, which is quite, quite realistic in terms of interaction and in terms of uh, showing and, 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 and presenting solutions. This is for a space transition manager. The, the new platform is Chill Platform. It's called Chill Platform. And this is the access platform in the, for the airport operation center. The layout is very realistic because you have a very, very big, very big screen. And also you have here uh, another supporting tool. And this is the, the, the platform that we use. I think and how, how did you implement high level of information then on the system, on the platform? All the, uh, because uh, so all, all, the from, all the information is available in each yeah. PC. But there was that, then the system was stating this is the solution you have to accept. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 all the solutions, the solutions are shown for each actor in each computer, and also in, in this case, in the big world. It's like an airport uh, operation center, like an, uh, an integrated operation center. 
the layout, yeah? You have a very, very big wall, and also you have the, your own screen. And this is the level of <laughs> integration that we have. So presently, we have some measures for dynamic capacity and balance. Uh, we have dynamic sectorization. Uh, also, you can uh, reroute a flight. Also, you can apply a delay on a flight to resolve the complexity. So, uh, what kind of automated functions you have? Did yes. you have in your? Can I find a, a detailed document that what you applied is it available? Yeah, I don't know if it, they are published, but we have uh, this different solution that we uh, implemented in the system that we uh, used in the simulation. The, 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 the solution that you said, we use it. Reroute. Rerouting is, is one, one, one of them, and also to manage the capacity, the, the capacity of the sectors. You did you apply STEM measures, short term ATFCM measures? I cannot say that because I am not expert in this specific uh, tool. In, in the product, of, of, of course, I don't, I don't know exactly what are these dynamic measures. What I can say is only the, the type of uh, the type of solutions that you can use. I appreciate it if you can supply any detailed document about the automation that you applied to the measures. Because I couldn't fi find any detailed explanation of those. And since I'm an air traffic controller, I'm interested yeah. in these issues. Yeah, if you're interested, I feel that I can provide you yeah, the, the, the document. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Phil here, who's one of the uh, experts who participated in the, uh, That's right. in the gaming sessions. I apologize for my lateness. I've been working in operations this morning um, for Eurocontrol uh, for the IFPS. Yeah, I, I took part uh, representing Eurocontrol in my capacity uh, as a flight dispatcher for Jefferson and also as a, um, a, uh, a flight planner for Eurocontrol, representing the network manager. So. Yeah. You can always ask me some questions as well if you wish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so part in all of the, uh, in the paper ga uh, paper-based uh, gaming for, um, in fact, I took part, it took part in the whole shooting match, didn't I, from Madrid. Uh, is the fair credit and also a branch fight for DLR for the second yeah. version. But I don't know, is this the whole thing? Is this the whole package here? Yeah. So I also completed a branch fight in December with DLR. Yeah. You, you participated as regional network manager, I think, uh, and also charter yeah, I I did, yeah, yeah. I and charter uh, charter yeah. airline agent. The accent, the, the word we kept using uh, amongst ourselves, that's the Air Berlin guys, the uh, the IENA guys, myself, was uh, feasibility. The accent on feasibility. We know automation is coming. We're working in the IFPS, which is uh, hasn't recruited any staff for ten years, so <coughs> we're the most clear and present example of. Uh, an air transport uh, facility or system that is, that is being automated. We are, we are full on for automation at the moment and they're, they're running this down. So, um, but unfortunately, the airplanes aren't going away. Well, so, it is extremely busy at the moment in the skies. Um, so, there you go. But uh, I personally found this a very fascinating um, concept, fascinating project. I think probably more because of the fact that. Um, as I say, I am undergoing uh, and watching Eurocontrol uh, and the, the Commission try to automate our flight planning throughout Europe, but uh, there, there are things that you just cannot automate, really you can't. For example, um, a few days ago I, really, I, uh, uh, I gave uh, assistance to uh, an Italian Air Force tanker pilot who was bringing a, a fueling tanker to the North Sea, and he thought he could fuel his chicks across French land from this terrain. You can't do that of course. So uh, um, these are things that um, you have to uh, educate, especially with people who are visiting Europe and stuff like that. Thank it was you. quite interesting Thank you for having coming. a system that gives you the <laughs> solutions though. That's where we have to uh, yeah, magically. be ultimate. Because <laughs> in twenty fifty I mean how realistic can you be? I don't know. That's very difficult. I think you're resonating something that Bern's been saying uh, just a little while ago. It's not fully human or fully automated, the automation takes over, it's the collaboration, if you like, of, an, of automated agents. And yeah, we, we have our, our uh, NHMI, it's called now, that we work in, in, uh, in network manager, you know, it's, uh, um, you're having to guide and manipulate stuff, I mean, I, if I go back 18 years, I never had a tool which I've just used now where I can specify exactly 
um, the reduced knife come manual that I can use and the, 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 the flight savings I've made. And we're actually doing a big flight efficiency project at the moment where we're, we're, we're noting everything that we rerun if it's positive and it's helping, um, helping uh, reduce fuel uh, use because everything's about fuel now. And uh, if, you, if you give a, uh, um, any kind of system that reduces uh, fuel usage, then it's a winner. It's as simple as that. But uh, yeah, yeah, there was a lot of having to go 2020, 2035, 2050, having to change your mindset. 2050, you were twiddling your thumbs and asking yourself, is this, is this feasible? Is it going to happen? Is it realistic? You know, so that was, uh, so that's when I, we were quite sceptical. Maybe it's not realistic for yeah. all the operations. I mean, one, yeah, yeah. one part, you know, specific I've part, yeah, but you are right. I've, I've written a report for each of my visits and you're more than welcome to, to have a look and see what my feelings were at the time. Did you take into consideration that free route environments? Uh, free route airspace, I think we free? may have done free route airspace. Free work. It's like airspace what we're using in Portugal at the moment where you just go yeah. enter at a specific point and just go direct and come out the other side. We're using uh, nighttime fuel saving routes now, for example, uh, coming across from uh, the Atlantic in, in the real world. Um, I think free route airspace concept. Yeah, I think, I think we, we I implemented it. I think there was an element yeah. of it. I can't, don't quote me, yeah. I'm not absolutely sure. Yeah, because you can reroute and you can do the reroute as as you prefer. You have some routes, but if I need routes, but, uh, but uh, sorry, then, then I, I don't understand you. There is not a fixed route network in free route environments. I'm just, I just asked. The thing but is, it's conditional, not conditional, sorry. Maybe conditional. On each of these scenarios, there was something like a, a thunderstorm coming in. Normally, it was a weather situation that meant, and you've probably gone through this while I've been away, but literally, uh, and we had to work out where we were going to put all the aircraft, it was simple as that. It didn't get to the stage where you were doing long long routes and uh, and stuff like that. It was just literally displacing aircraft in the majority and moving mm -hmm. aircraft into different sectors. So why did you use only three experts per session? Money? <laughs> in, in, in the beginning session of the market, for each environment. I think this number is so inadequate to assess well. It's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame we can't get that. We don't have 24 fields, unfortunately. But we would have loved to, to do. Uh, we would have loved to do a number of runs that would permit us to have some significant results. Because all you see here, you can always ask: Isn't that just because Phil is such a nice guy, or isn't that just because this is how they implement it, or isn't this just because they run the 2020 scenario before they run the 2050 scenario? You can. As long as you don't have significant statistical significance, you can always criticize the results as being um, a question, a result of the experimental setup, setup more than anything else. And that's something we would have loved to avoid here, but uh, it's just the availability of, 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 of people like, like you and Phil uh, actually limits that. Of course, the patients were higher at the beginning to do more runs and trying to yeah. not, not to get a statistical result because it was very difficult to find the, the amount of experts that we needed. But, uh, of course, uh, finally we we had a one of our limitations is the lack of availability of experts. But anyway, I think that this is uh, it happens in, in in the research and development projects sometimes. You start with the opinions of at least operational people, which give some ideas, and now. You can validate the results with a panel of experts, or, mm -hmm. or this is a starting point. Yeah. At least this is a starting point, and, and, the, and the opinions of the experts, are experts which are in operation, then okay, <laughs> the opinions has uh, uh, the operational value, yeah, at, at least. And now you can validate these results and see. Uh, because of actually, you have already mentioned in your report that the results could be biased because of the number of the experts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is yeah. could be biased. I suppose so. I, I, from a personal point of view, I went in there with an open mind. and I, I spoke to um, one of the Air Berlin guys on the just last week. Of course, I keep in touch with Manuel from Aina. And um, in, in open my eyes, I, I, 
I can remember from my time in the Air Force that we used vertical takeoff and landing with, with Harrier jump jets. The British government got rid of all of those, and yet there is talk of developing hubs in cities for aircraft in the future, you know, where we don't have to make our uh, business journeys from uh, Madrid Airport into the city, we would already be there. You know, totally far out concepts, which, uh, which are difficult to get your head around. For example, not having any pilots on a plane. Now, we, we, we talked about that. I, I was talking with Canute from my building on the other day about it. When's it going to happen? And uh, friends of mine who are pilots were kind of uh, obviously laughing about it and stuff like that. But if you look at the already the work that's going on with drones and remote uh, towers, concepts that we're, we're working on, um, and anything's possible. And I think you've got to be open-minded. I think that's one of the things that I, I, that I took out of it, whereby, um, I, for example, I've asked friends within the industry, would you get on an aeroplane without a pilot? And quite a lot of the adults said certainly not. But when uh, the kids that I train on football um, at the weekend mornings, I asked my entire team of eight to 11 year olds, would you get on a plane without a pilot? And they said yes. So, you know, they're gonna have a faith in, in systems that we will we'll never begin to believe. But there are crazy things happening now. And I think that you can't make enough long-term future research and I think that that is the biggest Achilles heel uh, that I'm seeing in Europe now. You've got the US spending 100 million on uh, long-term research last year, Europe we spent 4 million. So to be able to, um, 4 million euros, so to be able to, be able to really commit, um, I, I think it's a, it's a grave error if the Commission and, and uh, the other agencies and the other organisations don't think further forward. A message received by the SGO, I assume. <laughs> I'll take them out of this. Excellent. Great. We're doing extremely well on time after we finish here. So, thank you. Um, thank you. I'm going to have to get back. Because, um, it took me 50, I've got this jet too in my mind. It was from Alicante to Manchester, and there are four routes coming up the west of France which you can go through. All of them are closed, so there's a problem. Okay, you, you, you better get back. We'll have to meet for a coffee soon. Yeah. Nice to meet you. All the best. <laughs> How's your kid? Okay? Yes. She good? Yes. Oh, she's good. Oh, missing you.